I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the prophet Jeremiah, today chapter 29 verse 1, and then we shall drop down and read together verses 4 through 7. Jeremiah 29, beginning with verse 1. Now these are the words of the letter which Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the rest of the elders of the exile, the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them and plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and become the father of sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will have welfare. This is the word of God for you and for me, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And shall we pray? Oh God, I ask that you might challenge each of us today, wherever we are, whether we like where we are or we do not like where we are. I pray that you will challenge our church with where we are today, that we might simply make it our heart's desire to heed these words of Jeremiah the prophet and to bloom wherever it is that you, O oh God, plant us. And it is in Jesus' name that we offer this and each one of our prayers unto you. Most good and perfect and praiseworthy and magnificent and glorious and holy God. Amen. Last week, I was face to face with Van Gogh. It is an absolutely amazing experience. It is an absolutely thrilling experience. Every time it happens to me, every time I come face to face with Van Gogh. In fact, I'll just confess it to you, and I'll just admit it, because it does happen to me every time I'm face to face with Van Gogh. It's the only time in my life, really, that I can say that I am tempted to steal something. Something happens in my arm, and something happens in my hand, and I just have this desire to move my arms and my hands and to reach. I've yet to see anything by Van Gogh that would not look lovely above our fireplace. We still haven't quite found what we're looking for to put above our fireplace. And every time I see a Van Gogh, I think to myself now, that is what we need in our upstairs living room. I was so close to Van Gogh last week that at the very least I could have touched the painting. I looked around, and you know those gentlemen that are guarding and looking and keeping an eye on folks, I couldn't find one anywhere in sight. And I could have easily just reached out and touched. However, I did not. The Road Menders is a painting of men simply repairing the road. 
in St. Remy, France. It's just a group of men and they're bending over and they're picking up rocks and they're laying things down and there are trees along the road and Van Gogh's painting the road menders is breathtaking. It is captivating. So we ran into Van Gogh last week at the North Carolina Mus Museum of Art in Raleigh, our capital city. In addition to Van Gogh, I was also struck by the amount of activity that was in that museum on a lazy Thursday afternoon. There was a steady flow of people. It wasn't overly busy by any means, as you might expect for a Thursday afternoon, but there was a steady flow of people walking, going in and out of the museum. There were workers setting up various sets in the museum. There was obviously a professional photographer and she was taking pictures. There were professors leading classes in the museum. There were young people and there were old people. There was so much vitality in Raleigh on a lazy Thursday afternoon. I left the North Carolina Museum of Art and I left the restaurant where we stopped and had dinner and I thought, as I often think when I leave the city of Raleigh, what a glorious place this must be to live. With all of this activity, all of this vitality, all of this life, all of these options. I mean, in the city of Raleigh, you can look face to face at a Van Gogh. The Jewish community in our text today once lived in a Raleigh-like place, but no longer. Back in the day, back in Jeremiah's day, Jerusalem was filled with activity. But the people, they had been exiled by the Babylonians, King Nebuchadnezzar and his armies. Through a series of exiles, they had been removed from their Raleigh. They had been removed from Jerusalem, from their homeland, the place where the temple stands, and they are now in a foreign territory. Many of them are exiled in Babylon. So Jeremiah, the prophet, who is still in Jerusalem, writes a letter to the folks who have been exiled already into Babylon. And listen at what he says in this letter, verses 4 to 6. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Babylon is modern day Iraq. Jeremiah says to them, to these exiles, in his letter, he says, build houses and live in them and plant gardens and eat their produce. Verse 6, take wives and become the fathers of sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. So Jeremiah, he tells the people, he writes them a letter from a Jerusalem that is now destroyed or about to be fully destroyed. It is occupied by Babylonian troops. In just a few years, the temple will come down and the walls will come down around the city of Jerusalem. So Nebuchadnezzar begins these series of exiles to get the people out. And Jeremiah writes a letter to the folks who are now in Babylon and he says, hey, settle in for the long haul. He says, hey, you're not going anywhere soon. Don't just put up tents. Rather, 
build solid structured houses. Find a school for the children. Save for retirement. You're not coming home soon, so settle in for the long haul. Not only that, but Jeremiah tells the people that they are to make nice with their enemies. Look at verse 7. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. Jeremiah says, look, settle in. You're not coming back home anytime soon. Many of you, you will die and not come back to Jerusalem. Maybe your children, maybe your grandchildren, maybe your great-grandchildren, they'll come back to Jerusalem, but you're not going to come back to Jerusalem. So settle in, build your houses, save for retirement, find your kids a good school, and also pray for the city of Babylon. Pray for King Nebuchadnezzar. Pray for these ones who have forced you out of your own homeland and put you into this foreign country because you're going to be there for a long time and the city's welfare then is your welfare. So make nice and pray with and for your enemies. And so Jeremiah says to the people, he says, look, you must bloom where planted. They used to live in Raleigh. They used to be in Jerusalem with an art museum and with a temple and with shops and with fine dining and with homes. And now they're exiled into a foreign land Jerusalem is occupied, soon to be destroyed, and Jeremiah says, make the most of it. Find the light switches. Pray for your enemies, because you're going to be rubbing elbows with them for a very long time, at least 70 years, he says later in the chapter. Well, what a good message, I think. For us, both in our individual lives and collectively as a church family. This text is directed to a community of faith, a religious community, much like us. And the church, the American church, is very much in exile in 2022. The American Church of Jesus the Christ is very much in decline in 2022. The First Baptist Church of Ahoski is in exile. We are in decline in 2022. Ahoski was once. I've never seen it, but I've heard some of you with white hair tell me about it. That Ahoski was once a little Raleigh. That you had all kinds of activity up and down Main Street and shops and it was a beautiful community and a magnificent place to raise your children. No one has yet to tell me there's ever been a Van Gogh in a husky, but I get your point that it was just a marvelous, marvelous town of roughly 5,000 people. And it's changed the town in which our church lives and ministers and comes and goes is in a state of decline. So what do we do? Well, we bloom where we are planted. And don't you think that we are doing that? Look at this beautifully restored, renovated, whatever word you want to use, sanctuary. We are in the midst of renovating, restoring, 
whatever word you want to use, our fellowship hall and our kitchen. We've just completed a very nice green space in playground. And this is why I think the Christian discipleship team is so important to our church right now. I mean, we, we have beautiful facilities. We are maintaining our facilities. We have added a playground and a green space that the youth group used last Wednesday night. <coughs> but if we don't have people knocking around in this beautiful facility, it's all for naught. <laughs> we need people knocking around in this beautiful facility. And so we've developed this Christian discipleship team to help us with that. We're working on that. We're going to come up with strategies for outreach. We're going to pray. We're going to see what can be done under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The First Baptist Church of Ahoski, we're not just going to sit on our hands. We are going to bloom where planted. And this is where we're planted. This is not the Ahoski of the 1960s and 1970s and 1980s. It is the Ahoski of the 2000s. And this is where we're planted. And we are going to bloom. We are blooming, I think. And in our individual lives, right? Collectively, as a church, we want to bloom where planted. And in our individual lives, we want to bloom where planted. It's not in the Bible, but this tends to complement, I think, what Jeremiah is saying. Have you ever heard it said before? If you can't have the one you love, what do you do? You love the one you're with. Yeah. If you can't have the one you love, you love the one you're with. You bloom where planted. If you can't have the job you want, you serve God in the job that you have. If you can't live in the place you want, you serve God in the place where you live. You bloom, you see, wherever it is in life that God has planted you. So let's do this, church, collectively as a community of faith and in our individual lives. Let's heed Jeremiah's words and let's bloom where we're planted. Let's build our houses and let's unpack, unpack the boxes. Don't leave boxes in the corner of the downstairs spare room unpacked. No, we're going to be here for a while, so let's unpack those boxes and let's settle into our homes. Let's find where the light switches are and become intimate with them. Let's save for retirement and let's find the children a good place to go to school. As a church, we are to bloom right here in the declining Ahoski. Yeah. And individually, wherever God has you, personally, professionally, whatever, wherever God has you, individually, bloom. Bloom. We're planted.